Well, who doesn't love a good top 10 list, right? Today, guys, we're going to be checking out the top 10 most influential albums of my life and ultimately what shaped my musical taste. Let's get into it. guys welcome back real quick I just want to bring up something that I'm personally working on at this very moment as we speak or as I speak and as as you watch because we're not really talking because it's not up so what I mean is that I'm working on a collab with Zachy the cat from the Maya Mortal cover with Alex the drummer the dude that just absolutely laid down the rhythm section on that track as well as Nikki Tedesco an awesome awesome bass player from California we are working on the middle of a Slipknot cover at this very moment it's all done it's all laid out I just tracked my vocals for this track so I'm just in the middle of personally mixing it and mastering it and then I'll send it off to those cats individually Nikki's gonna be editing all together so I'm just very very excited just wanted to say hey be on the lookout for that but for today we're gonna be talking about the top 10 albums of my life not necessarily my favorite but the most influential these albums shaped my personal interest and then ultimately made me who I am today. So kicking it off, we're gonna give one honorable mention, and that is Volume 3 by Slipknot. You guys know me very, very well. You guys know my musical taste. I kinda wear them on my sleeve, literally. <laughs> I kinda have some of them tattooed on my body. But a great album that I spent many, many hours with listening on my iPod mini throughout 2008 through about 2011. Before I forget, Vermillion, Duality, you guys know all the hits on that album. Very, very important to me, so I had to include it on this list. All right, so starting off with number 10 is The Best of Both Worlds by Van Halen. This is a double album, greatest hits, including David Lee Roth stuff, as well as Sammy Hagar stuff, with the additional three new tracks from Sammy Hagar in 2004. So I was born in 92, and then in 2004 this came out, so if you can do the math, those of you playing at home, I am now currently 56 years old. So. When this album came out in 2004, when I was in sixth grade, it was just, it was awesome because I was always, always a Van Halen fan, which I'll get to later on in this video. But having two awesome discs with Sammy Hagar and David Lee Roth equally in one package, it was a great way for me to geek out on my favorite guitar player of all time. Yes, Eddie Van Halen is my favorite guitar player ever. Moving right into number nine. Coming in at number nine, number nine is How the West Was Won, the three disc album from Led Zeppelin. You'll see a common theme here. I'll include a lot of my father's influences that he not necessarily forced onto me, but certainly opened the door and I respect the hell out of him for that and raising me this way. But this is one of those one of those albums, one of those instances. The Led Zeppelin DVD that coincided with How the West Was Won, the three disc album, was huge for me in 2003 when it dropped. My father thought Jimmy Page was a god, man. He he absolutely loved Jimmy Page. That's why he had a Les Paul that he gave to me. He absolutely geeked out over Jimmy Page and especially this live DVD and CD that coincided at the same time. And just the way he reacted to watching Jimmy Page and listening to Jimmy Page, it inspired me because seeing my dad, who really didn't get excited about much of anything except NASCAR and Budweiser, <laughs> When he would listen to Jimmy Page, he would he would like get angry because of how good he thought he was. Now, I personally don't think he's the greatest of all time. I think he's maybe top 10. Yeah, I think he's top 10. But just seeing how he reacted inspired me to pick up the damn guitar and want to be like Jimmy Page. And then when I could play Jimmy Page stuff, it made my father even more mad because he was like, he was proud of his son, but you know, he uh, <laughs> he was pissed because he couldn't play like it. I'm no Jimmy Page, obviously, but it felt good to show off to my father and, and rip off some Bring It On Home, you know what I mean? So coming in at number nine, How the West Was Won. Number eight is really obscure. You guys will be like, what? Is Back Into Your System by Saliva. Now, I've told this story many, many times in the early days of this channel, back in 2017, early days of 2017, but I'll tell it again. My first concert was August 23rd, 2003, with Aerosmith, Kiss, and Saliva. My father and I, huge, huge Aerosmith fans, that's uh, top 10 favorite bands of all time, I'd say, honestly. Um, it was my first concert. Kiss was opening. We weren't really into Kiss at the time. Later on down the road, I was. But the opening act was Saliva. And that's a little bit obscure. I mean, back in early 2000s, there were, there were like some hard rock, heavy heavy stuff, you know, for the, for the time in the mainstream. Like, it was like them, 
Godsmack, Disturbed, you know, Saliva was right in that mix, right? And so we didn't know any of the songs, but they opened with Click Click Boom, and once they did, it like just opened opened the floodgates, and everybody started bumping up and down as the opening act, and they had the whole crowd engaged, and it, it was infectious, and it was, it was awesome to be a part of that. And so the very next day, my dad bought the Kiss Greatest Hits as well as Saliva back into your system, and through that whole summer, again, 2003, very influential, um, with the, you know, the How the West Was Won and then back into your system immediately after. That time period I hold very near and dear to my heart and I love, love having those memories and so Back Into Your System was a great, great, great album to have as an 11 year old kid. Number seven, number seven, back on with the Slipknot, here at number seven is 9.0 Live. This album I don't really necessarily like but in 2008, early 2008 when I was a busboy, I would throw this album into my, my Subaru Outback CD player and on the way to work I would scream, not like scream, not like but like ah, like literally scream the vocals and I'd show up to work with no voice and I had to pretend I was sick every single day but in reality I just spent the last 15 minutes screaming people equal it or disaster piece. Reason why I like this album is because it was, it was a nice before before Antennas to Hell, it was a nice, almost greatest hits collection of all the live stuff, and it allowed me to really, really appreciate Slipknot and have all their albums, or excuse me, all their songs on one album and all in one collection. And it's just another fond memory of being a teenager, just having his license, driving to work, literally screaming the words to my favorite band songs. So that's why 9.0 has made this list. Coming in at number six is a rather obscure pick for me, guys, and I'm very, very proud of myself for having this on my list and I'm proud that I to say that I grew up with this album through my father again and it is never mind the Bullocks here's the Sex Pistols their first and only album is just an absolute classic man I mean what else can you say about never mind the Bullocks right I remember listening to like Bodies and God Save the Queen and, and Holiday in the Sun and Submission as like a 10 year old man my father would put play never mind the Bullocks to me it was it was always a treat because that album for a 10 year old is is pretty uh, pretty racy, you know what I mean? It's pretty <laughs> some pretty heavy stuff there for a little kid to be listening to. So it was always like a treat when I'd convince my father, like, Dad, play the Sex Pistols, play the Sex Pistols. I have a spelling test tomorrow. I want to listen to it <laughs> while I while I color in the lines, you know, for my fourth grade exam. So it was it was weird for my father to to give in to that, but whenever he like again like would would like treat me with never mind the Bullocks. Man, we just had a great time, and I hold a lot of sentimental memories of my father and music near and dear to my heart, especially now that he's not around. So that is just one one of the many, many great memories, is just listening to, like, bodies <laughs> with my dad as a 10-year-old. So, never mind the books, had to include it on this list. Alright guys, now we're in the top five, we're winding it down here, alright? Number five for me is the first Van Halen album. I think like every single guitar player when they first heard Van Halen and they first heard Eruption and You Really Got Me and Running With The Devil and Ice Cream Man, when you first heard that, especially for me as again, like maybe, I don't know, eight or nine when I first heard the, when I first heard the first Van Halen album, blew me away, blew my mind. To this day, blows my mind. Especially being able to get that sound in 1978, that's 41 years ago, like, dude. <laughs> Uh, he's, Eddie Van Halen, to me, will forever be the greatest guitar player of all time. He invented the heavy metal shred guitar as we know it to this day. Everybody tried to copy, copy him. He literally invented the Super Strat by himself, including a Floyd Rose with a humbucker and a locking nut, yada, yada, yada. We all know the story. He was the first guy to, to like build his stuff and like create new products that weren't available, modding guitars basically, and amps as well. He's the first person to mod the guitar and the amp and that that whole idea of that it, Eddie made it cool to like f with your guitars and like create your own thing and go against whatever the f everybody else was doing, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's it's inspiring. It's it's a big middle finger to the people who like say you can or can't use this for certain gear and in, in terms of different genres. You know, like you can't use a, a strat for metal you I can you know I just love that I love that about Eddie and he will forever be my favorite guitar player of all time so number five is the first Van Halen album <laughs> all right you ready to laugh because <laughs> I'm already laughing number four man you'll be a, you'll be amazed at why this why this album is so far far up this ladder man and, and my top ten list but number four most influential album for me 
is the chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water by the almighty Limp Bizkit. And I'll tell you why. I used to hang out with the third graders in seat 12 of my bus, you know, in first grade in 98, 99. And, and their, their parents, they, uh, they would let them listen to Limp Bizkit. They had like significant other at the time or a uh, $3 bill, y'all. Those kids aren't really doing so well nowadays. I, I know one of them's dead and, and they didn't really go far. But they had a, uh, they had a lot of influence on me, and uh, positive or negative. But the way that they like, they talked about it, and it was like their music. Like, they, uh, you know, it was, it was like, it was like bad. It was like you can't, you can't, you can't have this. You know, I, I'm eight years old, sitting in seat 12 with a bus. You know, I can't show this first grader this. You know, this is too, too heavy for him. And then, so like, when I finally became like in 10 years old. I begged and begged and begged my mother to get me the clean version of chocolate starfish and hot dog flavor water and she finally caved after about eight months of, of just begging for it and it just blew my mind. It was so cool for me to have this album. I had no idea what any of the, 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 like, the words meant or like you know what a chocolate starfish is. The fact that I had this and it was mine and it wasn't my dad's music and it was bad to listen to and it, it, was, it was wrong for me to have it just made me absolutely love that album and it, it was cool. It was my first new metal album and that just opened the floodgates from there on out that hey I have something that I'm not supposed to have and it made me feel good. So number four, chocolate starfish hot dog flavored water. Alright boys we're at the top three alright I think you can probably guess what they are. One's kind of a little obscure, I don't really talk about this band that much, but without further ado, here we go. Coming in at number three is Horizons by Parkway Drive. And this album is the first album that I really like learned from start to finish in lower tunings and drop tunings. I think it's why I love Drop B so much. I had my Gibson Les Paul Studio that my father gave me, that was his guitar, and I like tore that guitar up solely on Parkway Drive for like and a straight year I would listen to Killing With A Smile, Horizons, Atlas, Deep Blue, like those first four albums of Parkway Drive like I learned from start to finish and it just so happens that Horizons was my favorite one to play. It was the first time again in drop tunings but it was also very difficult, it was very technical, it was very fast, a lot of, a lot of chugs and a lot of breakdowns and as like a 19, 20 year old kid not learning or not wanting to learn classic rock anymore and wanting to play heavier stuff alongside with Slipknot. Parkway Drive was that band. They're probably my second favorite band of all time. And just, I love Horizon so much. I love that album and I, I again, just played it to death. And so that was that was the, the time of my life when I like really, really became better. I don't wanna say good, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm a good guitar player or not, but I certainly got better from what I was during this time period, solely focusing on Parkway Drive songs. So number three is Horizons, that album is very, very important to me, especially as a guitar player. All right, guys, we're at the top two. I think you guys, you know me very well. You, you, would, you would assume that these albums would be somewhere in this list, but you don't know exactly where. where the they're in the top two, so I'm gonna spoil them right now. You have the self-titled and Iowa by Slipknot. It's pretty obvious from, you know, for you guys who, li who like this channel and watch, me, watch my videos. But number two for me is the self-titled album. I borrowed this album from my stepsister. I wouldn't say stole it, but I borrowed it and I still have it to this day. The original copy, the original when it came out, the 1999 version of this album. It was printed in 99 and she had it. She was a little bit older than I am. You know, I remember seeing it on her shelf in her room and I was like afraid of it. I always knew that Slipknot was bad. You know, Slipknot was scary. Like, oh man, don't. Don't listen to them, you know, they have masks and they say the F word and, you know, they're scary, right? And that was always, like, intriguing to me. It was like, you know that scene in Step Brothers in the very beginning where uh, Will Ferrell walks past the drum room, the beat lavatory, and it plays, like, that devil music when he's got his suit bat suitcases in his hand? That's how that felt to me, like, walking by her room and seeing that on the shelf. It would be like, I'd be walking and, like, it would be like, And, like, I felt like I saw, like, fire and, you know, the earth cracking too and hell was about to come up. I really felt like that as a little kid. <laughs> and so one day I borrowed it and I put it in my CD player and I was like, wow, I'm gonna see how scary this is. And honest to God, when I listened to it, I was disappointed because of how much I liked the songs and how not scared I was. I wasn't scared, I was like, I caught myself like, to like sick and eyeless. And then I remember like stopping as it got to wait and bleed and being like, wait a minute. I'm not scared, I like this music and it's awesome. 
So I like, I ejected it and I was like disappointed that I didn't find something that was sp supposed to be like scary. And then like I kept going back to it and borrowing it and borrowing it without her knowing. And then uh, yeah, I just took it. I just took it and now it's mine. It's it's in my room at my mother's house in my in my little kid room. Yeah, I just took it. I I'm still borrowing it to this day. Let's just say that I haven't stole it. I borrowed it. And uh, yeah, so that album from start to finish it just like opened my eyes. And that was that was the album that got me into heavy music officially. And like that what made me branch out into looking to more heavier and darker and scarier things just because it was fun and. You know, you wanted to see as a kid how deep and scary you could go and how heavy you could get. I'm still on that search. So number two for me is definitely the self-titled album. Which is a nice segue into my number one, the most influential album of my lifetime is Iowa by Slipknot. Story time. In high school, I was really little, man. I was really, really skinny and short. And uh, I was an easy target. Easy target for, for kids who had problems with themselves and would like to pick on people, right? So, it kinda sucks to talk about it, but hey, I guess a lot of kids go through it, whatever. So in the beginning of my 11th grade year, I was like five foot six and weighed like 140 pounds. Easy target, easy target to, for people to pick on. And um, you know, and without going into details about you know girls you know, and, and, and bullies, blah, blah, blah. I started working out at this time and from like let's say September of my junior year, I was 145 pounds. By March, I came out about 185 pounds, and I was about five foot nine. So over the winter time, I found weight training. I got seriously involved in like taking supplements and you know protein, creatine, etc. But Iowa carried me through that time period. I was pissed, man. I was just a pissed off kid. But I remember the moment I found people who could. I like freaked out. I freaked out, man. I found it. I I threw it in my headphones and I went and I lifted and I like became literally obsessed and like not possessed but like you know what I mean like I was just like I was I was pissed off and I was so determined and when I heard that song man it didn't make me mad it made me happy and it made me like fueled up and like G'd up ready to go man I felt invincible with that song and then I would listen to that and I am hated and disaster piece and the shape and like those like those songs and that album it like made me feel good about myself and it made me feel like I wasn't alone and it made me feel like I could lift that weight and I could get stronger and it wasn't gonna last forever man I came out over that winter I came out on the other side after Christmas break and a little bit after that like a monster dude like I was a 16 year old kid and I went from like this scrawny little dude to like not having no neck and it was funny how all those bullies and all those girls who like thought it was funny to like pick on me and, and mislead me and whatever man you know all kids go through it but it's funny how when I came out on the other side like nobody with me anymore and it made me feel great man I feel like that album made me made me who I am today it made me realize that hey if you put hard work in and like realize that hey people suck man people people are gonna do what they're gonna do but you can control how you react to it if you put in hard work and you have a goal and, and you ignore all the negativity in life, you're going to be fine, man. You're going to come out on top. And I still live that way today, whether it was, you know, time in school, or when I was in the army, when I was in the military, or even now on this YouTube channel, man. There's haters, there's people that are going to take shots at you. But if you just keep your head on straight and just go for it 110% and you put in the work, you're going to come out on top. And so I feel like that album taught me those life lessons. And I still believe that to this day. <sighs> Do you guys seriously think I was gonna get that heavy and get on that serious of a topic on a silly top 10 list? Hey man, <sighs> people go through some things and, and say what you want about people, but music has always been there. It's always been there for a lot of people. And Iowa, man, just, it carried me through, through those times and I'll never forget that. That all being said, guys, back on some lighter notes, that is my top 10 most influential albums of my lifetime. I hope you really enjoyed enjoyed this video and this list. If you have any similarities, or if you'd like to leave your own personal top 10 most influential, not favorite, but important influential, whatever you want to call it, leave it all down below, and I'd love to discuss with you guys. Don't just leave a list down there and just like don't interact with me. I really do love interacting with all you guys and, and hearing your feedback, and it just, it's fun, man. It's fun meeting new people on the internet and just talking with you guys and just having a, a genuine conversation about the things that I'm passionate about and things that you're passionate about. So if you want to play along, leave your list down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I am out of here. Stay metal, and I'll see you guys next time.